The movie begins on a brisk summer evening in 1932, where Hugh Legat and his German friends Paul von Hartmann and Paul's girlfriend Lena joyously party after graduating from Oxford University. The group becomes intoxicated and fools around near the pond. Amid their revelry, Paul encourages Hugh to visit him in Munich, believing in the country's expansion to a new Germany. Six years later, Hugh is working at the British Foreign Office. Arriving for lunch at the Imperial Grand, he excuses himself for his tardiness, disclosing to his wife Intel about the Nazis preparing to mobilize to conquer Czechoslovakia if no agreement is reached between them and France and Britain. Their brief reunion is cut short by an important phone call as Hugh receives a new assignment. Disappointed, Pamela leaves abruptly. Later, he speaks with his boss, Sir Osmond Cleverly, who feels anxious about Hitler's actions. He instructs him to take notes and deal with the BBC as Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's private secretary. At the PM's office at Downing Street, Chamberlain speaks with Sir Horace Wilson, who informs him the negotiations fell through and Hitler is bent on mobilizing. In Berlin, Paul, now a German Ministry of Foreign Affairs translator, receives the same intel from Captain Eric Court, who informs him that Wehrmacht General Hans Oster will meet them in the evening to discuss their secret plot to overthrow Hitler. Soon after, both Hugh and Paul listen to Prime Minister Chamberlain's speech on the radio, with the latter translating his words for the Nazi Party Chancellery. Chamberlain wishes to enter peaceful negotiations with Adolf Hitler at any cost, even if that means allowing Germany to seize control of the Sudetenland. With the help of Paul's colleague and lover, Secretary Helen Winter, the radio broadcast is transferred to paper before he takes it to his appointment in Mita. Elsewhere, Hugh returns home to tell Pamela about temporarily staying at her parents' house for a week while he works closely with the Prime Minister before the war begins. Unable to reveal more context about staying behind, she becomes frustrated, believing he has become a distant father and husband since his new position. Meanwhile, Paul bumps into German SS officer Franz Sauer, who belongs to Hitler's escort squad. He reveals that he is delivering a message to the British embassy but keeps mum about his true feelings about the Nazi party. Soon after, Hugh receives the written reply of Hitler, giving it to Chamberlain, who discovers he is not dissuaded from stopping the war. As he reads the Times newspaper, the Prime Minister decides to write a message to Italian Prime Minister Benito Mussolini to initiate peace talks since he is closely allied with Hitler. By nightfall, Hugh becomes disturbed to see Jewish people forcibly scrubbing the pavement by SS officers outside a theater. He then meets with Court and Lieutenant Colonel Oster, who reveals that Hitler's generals have convened to strongly oppose warring with the Czechs, leading to Hitler's potential arrest and execution. Paul and Court are dubious that the Wehrmacht will betray the dictator, believing this will escalate the situation further. Still, Oster is keen to set their plan in motion and let Hitler invade Zudetenland. Later, Paul confides with Helen about their scheme, but she feels unnerved about their chances of success. She hands him the meeting notes she smuggled from the Foreign Office Political Department detailing Hitler's expansionist plan for Germany, the Hasbach Memorandum. Simultaneously, Hugh visits Prime Minister Chamberlain in his office, discussing his time at Oxford University as a debater. He hands the young secretary a copy of his speech to scrutinize and improve. The following morning, reporters gather outside Downing Street for the Prime Minister's address. Hugh turns over the revised speech to one of the office typists, Joan, and makes duplicate copies. He then returns to Cleverly's office to hold the phone to keep the line open and listen for news from Berlin. Unfortunately, their office received no reply, leaving the Prime Minister disappointed as he prepares for parliamentary proceedings. A few moments later, Hugh is contacted by the British Foreign Ambassador, Sir Neville Henderson, who relays Hitler's message to Chamberlain. After quickly writing down the reply, the young secretary runs across town and hands it to Cleverly, who relays it to the Prime Minister as he speaks to Parliament. Chamberlain becomes relieved reading that Hitler has postponed mobilization and agreed to a conference with him, Mussolini, and French Prime Minister Edouard Daldier. The news is intercepted by Helen, who discloses it to Paul and the officials. With their plan dissolved, Helen urges Paul to reveal possessing Hitler's notes about the German expansion. He requests Oster to include Hugh in their plan by inviting him to the Munich conference as part of the English delegation so that he can smuggle the document to the British Prime Minister. Court gives him a gun if he gets close enough to assassinate Hitler. Meanwhile, Hugh is summoned by Sir Alexander Cadogan and MI6 Chief Colonel Menzies about the secret opposition against Hitler inside the Foreign Ministry and that Paul is willing to share the intel with him personally. He hopes to keep his task secret from the Prime Minister, as it is considered an espionage act on foreign soil. Later, Hugh flashes back to when his friendship with Paul started falling out in 1932 after a heated verbal argument about supporting the Nazi party at a bar. While the other young patrons toasted Hitler, Hugh and Lena looked disappointed that Paul would vote for someone they consider racist towards other nations, including Jewish people. Hugh calls him out for defending a fanatical, angering Paul enough to storm out.
Days later, after getting the documents from Helen, Paul boards a train to Munich, bunking with Franz. He then carefully hides the papers and the pistol in the washroom. Later at the airfield, Hugh joins the Prime Minister while addressing reporters as they board a plane to Munich. Meanwhile, Franz inspects Paul's luggage but finds nothing incriminating, keeping him clear. Paul leaves the room to translate the foreign press summary in the Times editorial to Hitler, who chastises him for his education at Oxford. He then witnesses the dictator's plans for the Czech invasion, unnerving him as he leaves the room. In Munich, Hitler and Chamberlain arrive simultaneously, as crowds gather in joyous praise and salutation for their great leader. Inside the Chancellery Hall, Hitler borrows Paul's watch before entering the library to begin the conference, instructing the leaders to bring only one advisor. Meanwhile, Hugh becomes increasingly nervous as he smokes while Joan is busy typing. He receives a call from Cleverly, who denies him to participate in the conference. Joan promises to cover up for his absence, allowing him to rush to the location and meet with Paul, who is equally anxious to carry out the plan without rousing suspicion. He leads Hugh outside to a nearby courtyard and leaves a note on a bench to meet him at the local bar. Once there, they try blending in with the bar patrons, ordering drinks while they discuss each other's lives. Paul tells his former friend they are the last hope at stopping Hitler as the pair argue about whether the invasion of Czech must continue. Handing him the documents, he pleads with him to arrange a secret meeting with Chamberlain in the evening, hoping to present the argument to the Prime Minister and convince him not to sign the Munich Agreement. Unbeknownst to them, Franz is watching closely from the opposite table while drinking beer. Later, while Hugh reads the notes, Paul and Helen are informed that an agreement for the immediate handover of the Sudetenland has been reached to be signed after dinner at the banquet hall, where the pair are invited. Meanwhile, Hugh is bared by Sir Horace to talk to Chamberlain in private, delaying the plan. Paul excuses himself from the feast, leaving the room after Hitler returns his watch. The two friends meet in the lobby, arguing about Chamberlain and earshot of Joan, who eavesdrops on their conversation. Fearing they are at the edge of an imminent war, they agree to meet with the British Prime Minister together. After retrieving the documents from Hugh's room, the pair march towards Chamberlain's quarters. Hugh hurriedly tells the Prime Minister about the meeting notes, believing they are evidence of his intent to invade nations for conquest. Chamberlain reluctantly allows Paul to disclose his evidence in a brief meeting. The German translator clarifies that Hitler wants to expand German across Europe, begging him to forego the agreement. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister dismisses his claims, refusing to take action based on vague military plans for a coup d'état. Paul becomes angry, insisting Hitler is turning into a monster that will never stop lying to get what he wants. As he leaves, Chamberlain asks Hugh to dispose of the documents while expressing his disappointment towards the young secretary. However, he disobeys and hides the papers inside the drawer, believing his friend is right about his assumptions. Later, they meet at the hall and apologize to one another. As a backup plan, Hugh promises to bring the documents to London and show them to MI6. Afterward, an announcement is heard to gather everyone in the library for the signing ceremony. The two men become forlorn to witness the event, ending the secret mission. Not long after, Paul takes Hugh to a local nursing home to see a bedridden Lena. After an emotional visit, Paul reveals that he and Lena broke up after Hugh's trip to Munich. Sometime later, in 1935, she attended an anti-Nazi rally and was thrown into Morigen, a female prison camp. She experienced harsh treatment, having a star of David carved in her back and getting thrown out of a window after discovering her Jewish heritage. The tortures she endured resulted in paralysis and her inability to speak. As they stop on the side of the road, Paul reveals he is bent on assassinating Hitler, leading the two friends to argue. With no way of persuading him to call off his plan, Hugh bids farewell, telling him he will be dearly missed. He returns to the Regina Palace Hotel, bumping into Joan, who informs him Chamberlain is looking for him. He is then instructed to redraft Hitler's undertaking into a joint statement. Hugh returns to his suite only to find it ransacked by a furious Franz, who attacks him. As he leaves disgruntled, Hugh hurriedly checks the drawer but discovers the missing documents. Hoping to alert Paul about the theft, he asks for Chamberlain's permission to accompany him to the meeting as an official translator. They arrive at the Chancellery and see Paul waiting outside the office. After the Munich Agreement is signed, Hugh secretly passes a note to his friend between the newspapers before leaving, apologizing for losing the documents to the Germans. As the last SS guard leaves the room, Paul prepares his pistol. At the same time, Hitler reads through the foreign press summary, feeling angered by Chamberlain's assumptions about his role as a German leader. Unfortunately, he fails to shoot him after engaging in a discussion about his feelings about the war. Meanwhile, when Joan rides with him, Hugh goes to the airport. As they speak privately, the typist reveals herself as the niece of Colonel Menzies and that she had been assigned to help Legat in his espionage activity. She confesses taking the document from the drawer to prevent Franz from finding it. On the plane, 
Chamberlain is warned by Sir Horace not to be complacent with Hitler's undertaking, but the Prime Minister believes he can unite the nations against him if he breaks the agreement. As he returns to Britain, he speaks with reporters to share the good news about his visit to Munich, declaring peace for our time as he shows the signed treaty. Hugh then returns to his wife, apologizing for his actions and revealing that he plans to resign and join the Royal Air Force to prepare for the imminent war. Elsewhere, Paul laments to Helen about his failure to kill Hitler. Eventually, the peace between Britain and Germany ended after a year. Under heavy scrutiny, Chamberlain resigned and died a few months later. The movie ends as the extra time bought by the Munich Agreement allows them to prepare for war and topple the Nazi regime. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.